Hey everybody, welcome back. Asahi Linux, let's talk about that. So many of you have been asking me and bugging me and on my about <laughs> Asahi Linux. I've got all these machines here today. I haven't installed Asahi Linux on it, but somebody who has tested Asahi Linux on an M2 MacBook Air, tested it and wrote an article with some results and cross-referenced the same tests on Mac OS. I've got Mac OS on all these and we're gonna extrapolate those results to some of these machines here. Real quick here, I got an M1 MacBook Air, 16 gigs, an M2 MacBook Air base model with eight gigs of RAM, an M2 MacBook Air with 24 gigs of RAM, and uh, a larger SSD, it's got one terabyte in there, and a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, base model MacBook Pro over there. So, so this is a report by Michael Larabelle, I hope I'm saying that right. One of the driving forces behind the Pharonix test suite, which we're gonna use here today to do a couple of the tests. He wrote a very detailed article and he tested, let's see, his M2 MacBook Air base model against AMD Ryzen 7 6850U, Rembrandt Zen 3 Plus, oh my God, that's a long name. Intel Core i7-1280P, Alder Lake P, and AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. That happens to be the same spec processor that I have in that Asus model over there that I've been using for my work sometimes. So I may do it on that one as well in the future. And he also compared some of the benchmark tests on his M2 MacBook Air on Mac OS and on Asahi Linux. Now Asahi Linux is a work in progress. They're doing a huge job over there, but for every machine that comes out, there's customizations that need to be done that take a lot of time. And you'll see in some of the results here that you would expect the M2 to actually be faster than the M1, but the M1 version of Asahi Linux has already been out for a while. It's been in development longer, I should say, not out. And it beats the M2 in a few cases. And the M2 beats all the other machines in a few cases. So let's check this out. Last month, Asahi Linux announced M2 support. It's still experimental. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I haven't installed it on these machines. I like to do the tests, but I don't like to get my hands that dirty. I mean, I get my hands kind of dirty, but not, not that dirty. So thanks to people like Michael over here. There's still a lot of things that the M2 does not support. Thunderbolt, USB, Neural Engine, Touch ID, Keyboard Backlight, Web Light, Web Camera, uh, Video and Code Decode, Microphone Support, Internal Speakers, basically anything to make your machine sort of user friendly. But you have the command line, you have the terminal and you can execute some of these benchmarks. So if you're a developer, you can probably still do your work on one of these on Asahi Linux. Well, depends what kind of developer you are. If you're going to be doing any kind of GPU related tasks, then you're kind of out of luck right now. Coming soon. By the way, I'll link to this article down below. You can check it out yourself for all the details. Let's get into some benchmark results. So the first page of results has WebP image encoding. Interesting. This is uh, a lot of developers are kind of removed from this particular task, but uh, maybe some of you do do this. And this is something pretty interesting, especially when you see the differences on an M2 MacBook Air of Asahi Linux versus Mac OS. And here are the differences. Asahi Linux is a little bit faster at doing WebP image encoding. There's a bunch of other tests in here, like SIMD JSON, for example parsing gigabytes of JSON per second. JSON is everywhere. It's something a lot of developers use for data representation. So very valid test for developers. I'm gonna do that in a second, but let's kick things off with this WebP imaging code. So I need first to get Veronix test suite installed on all these, and it's pretty easy to do. You go to this website URL, veronixtestsuite.com, and you click on downloads. And if you have Windows, you get this one. If you have Ubuntu slash Debian, you get this one and we're gonna get this one. It's a tar file. All you do is click on it on a Mac and it just extracts it for you right there. Great. We're gonna pop open a terminal and all I gotta do is say CD and drag that folder to the command line. It's gonna populate the path there and we're in the folder. Now, inside the folder, you can either install it or you can just run it right from here, which is what I'm gonna do. And you do that by saying Pharonix, and you can type in help. Now it does require PHP command line package to be installed, and that's the only hard requirement to run this. PHP is a requirement, so you need to install it. And since I have Homebrew installed, I'm gonna say brew install PHP. Now if you don't have Homebrew installed, I have instructions on how to do that on Mac OS in a video, I'll link to it down below. Brew install PHP, it's gonna download it and install it. 
After PHP is installed, you can run Pharonix Test Suite Help and you'll get this nice little help view. Now, not every one of the tests in the Pharonix Suite is going to be available for you to use on a MacBook, especially on an Apple Silicon MacBook. So in order to see available tests, you say Pharonix Test Suite. Well, it's not available tests. It's actually list dash available tests. And here are all the tests that are available on my system. And on the right, you'll see if it's a processor related test, if it's a system test, a network test, an OS test, graphics, or disk. And there's even some memory tests in there as well. So some of these are pretty interesting considering we have such a wide variety of machines here. If there's a workflow that you use yourself as a developer or whatever work you do, you can find whatever matches your type of work and uh, perhaps closely match the test to what you're doing. And I know that I won't be able to go through all of these right now, but if there is something, you can look through the list and let me know in the comments down below. WebP imaging code is the one we're looking for first. So I can just do a search and there it is. You can just ignore the PTS slash. We're gonna use WebP. In order to run that particular test, we're gonna say Pharonix test suite and then benchmark and then the name of the test, which is WebP. Now, when you execute that, there's a few things that are gonna happen. One is uh, it's gonna look for dependencies that it needs to install. It's gonna give you some options. So here I'm gonna reattempt to download the dependencies that are missing. So it's gonna do some brew installations and go through that whole process. Now there is some red text there, but I didn't see an error. And on my MacBook Pro, where I first installed this, this test worked. So we're gonna continue. And uh, now you get an option for what kind of test you wanna run, a subtest. And here we see that the encode settings is quality 100 lossless. So I'm gonna do that. And that's option four. So I'm gonna run option four here. And now it's asking me, do I wanna save the results? You can save the results and you can upload them to Pharonix uh, where you can tabulate and see everybody else's results. But here I'm just gonna ignore it, not save the results and we'll just see it on the screen. It's running the test now. I'm gonna set the same thing up on all these machines so we can see how they all do. All right. And I've got a result now for the base model MacBook Air, which is the same machine that Michael used here. So there were three runs and an average of 16.3. If we take a look at this chart, Michael got 16.8 for Mac OS. I got a slightly better score than Michael. <laughs> Uh, close enough, but his Asahi Linux did a little better job. So this tells me that we're pretty close as far as the numbers I'm seeing on my machine versus what he got. We'll be able to extrapolate to the rest of these machines pretty closely. I've now set up Veronix on all these, but they're so far apart. Schwarzenegger won't be able to reach them. I'm gonna have to do this manually. You're setting this one out, buddy. Sorry. All right, let's go. WebP. And this test is done. Now, Pretty consistent, I gotta say. This uh, it looks like a CPU test, right? Let's let's take a look at that. I'm gonna say list available tests, and I want to take a look at WebP. And indeed, WebP is a processor test. Now, what gave it away? The two machines that are M2 have a score of 16.3 time of 16.3 and 16.6. .6. And the two older machines with the M1 base cores, 17.4 on the MacBook Air and 17.3 on the MacBook Pro. So no advantage there to the MacBook Pro. This seems to be a, kind of a single threaded type of operation. I'm not 100% sure if it's single threaded or not, but I'm guessing because the MacBook Pro has a lot more performance cores than the MacBook Air. And if this was a multi-core test, that one would win. Let's move on. The next interesting test for developers is gonna be the SIMD JSON test that I talked about earlier. So let's run that one. Same thing, Pharonix test suite benchmark SIMD JSON. I think that's all I need to do and let's go. All right, they're all running now. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, we're done and <laughs> well, um, it's pretty close. I mean, it's dead on with the two M2 MacBook Airs. 3.25 is what I got on both of them. So that's 3.25 gigabytes per second of JSON. The MacBook Pro gave me 3.07, not quite as good as the M2 and the M1 MacBook Air 2.99. So that's the lowest one, but still pretty close. Again, if we take a look at SIMD JSON, that is a processor test. Are there any other tests here that are not processor related? Let's find one. So we've got renaissance we've got compression tests running all these today will be uh, a lot so i'm just giving you a little sample of what's available here now sqlite is pretty interesting for developers and so is pybench but i have a feeling those are all processor oh pybench is a little different pybench is system not 100 percent sure what system means uh, 
everything? Let's do it. And also, what is PyBench? Well, PyBench tests Python. If you go to openbenchmarking.org, you'll see PyBench is one of those tests. And we've got Michael Larabelle, the usual suspect when it comes to this area. You can see some numbers over here for the popularity of the test. In other words, Python is getting popular. Well, what do you know? All right, let's do PyBench. I think we're good. Oh, I forgot to mention this. There's another thing here. If you're running this on your machine, you can see that other results that are pretty close to what you got. So this result, 60th percentile, you get the average in color, then you get the Ryzen Pro 6850U, which is a little bit better than that. Xeon Platinum 8380, which is a little worse. And then Ryzen 5 is a little bit worse than that. So you kind of get a little, a little graphic of where you are in relation to some other processors nearby. Can Mr. Schwarzenegger help us out here today? I think he can. He only has three fingers. I have four computers, so I'm gonna have to use an extra finger here for this last one. And, whoa there, whoa, I totally, totally messed that up, but that's okay. We can't all be perfect. Okay, they're all running. Let's see how that works out. Schwarzenegger, you messed up, man. Don't let me down. Okay, we've got some results here, and yeah, the M2s are still a little bit better. 822 milliseconds on this test for the dying M2 base machine. Better plug that in soon, huh? 834 for the MacBook Air M2 upgraded variety. So a little bit slower on that one. Interesting. 910 for the M1 MacBook Air and 884 for the MacBook Pro. And what did Michael get? They were pretty close. Mac OS got 837, Asahi got 838. By the way, I've had a lot of people comment saying, why don't you do your test plugged in? Well, on a Mac, it doesn't actually matter. Not like on a PC machine or a Ryzen or an Intel machine, I should say. On a MacBook, I've done the tests and the performance is the same, whether you have it plugged in or not. It's using full power in either case. Now, if you keep following the article, you'll see results for AMD Rembrandt versus Intel Alder Lake and Apple M2 on Linux. Let's take a look at some of these. Here is that WebP image encoder that we've done already. And you can see the results for MacBook Air M2 versus M1. And then compared to Ryzen 7, Core i7 and Ryzen 9, all of which are better than the M2 and the M1 on Linux. So at the moment, those machines do better. But one thing that's not actually mapped here in this test, this is strictly performance, right? But we don't see performance per watt. And I have a feeling that if you count performance per watt, the Apple Silicon machines might do a lot better. I'm not an apologist or defending anything here, but I'm willing to bet that the Ryzen 7, the Core i7, and the Ryzen 9 were probably plugged in and it probably used quite a bit of power. Unlike these completely silent fanless machines, this one has a fan, but I haven't heard it turn on at all during these tests so far. All right, let's keep going. SIMD JSON is something we've done as well. Now in this one, the throughput of Core i7 is the best, 4.3 over there. Wow, that's pretty good. Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7 follow closely behind, and then followed by M2 and M1. If we take a look at Java Gradle build, which is something I haven't done here yet, but let me know in the comments if you do wanna see that. Apple M2 actually wins with 143 seconds, wow and Core i7 has the worst time. NumPy, or as I like to call it, Numpy. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, that's not funny. Um, Apple M2 does pretty well over here, wow. Both Apple M2 and M1 do really well on Asahi Linux versus the competition. Node V8 Web Tooling Benchmark. Apple M2 does really well on this one, 18.97 over there. But the M1 does the worst. I don't know what accounts for that interesting spread. Michael says with the Node Web Tooling Benchmark, the M1 was slower than the tested Intel and AMD laptops, while the M2 was now able to outperform all of them. Not clear why. Obviously, there's some special optimizations that the M2 takes care of in that particular instance. So like I said, folks, every one of these tests is going to be slightly different and you have to judge your own workflow based on what you're doing and take a look at the results that are appropriate for your use case. Now, one thing that I've noticed that doesn't do very very well is TensorFlow Lite. There's a couple of data sets that uh, this benchmark is using. You can take a look at all of them here. And uh, we're kind of all over the place because in some cases, Apple Silicon does really well, like MobileNet Quant. The M1 actually does really well there. Really, really well. More than three times faster than Core i7. Whereas uh, a test like this one, SqueezeNet, they both don't do as well as the Ryzen machines. 
And in mobile net float, the M2 does the worst in that case. Now, if we take a look at this uh, pie chart at the end of the article, it says number of first place finishes. The M1 gets the least number of first place finishes and the Ryzen 9 gets the most. And M2 is not bad, just a little bit behind i7. There's a total of 190 benchmarks that Michael ran across all those machines. And he says for straight up first place finishes, the Ryzen 9 5900HX LED is the winner. Here's the geometric mean of of all test results and the M1 and the M2 are at the bottom. So it's a pretty young project. So it's showing here that even though with this powerful hardware, there's still a lot of work to do with Asahi Linux. He also summarizes that the CPU performance is really good while some of the other system performances maybe not so good. He also mentions there was an issue encountered with a number of heavy multi-threaded workloads where the M2 performance was behind the M1 performance, presumably due to some thermal and power related issues that still need to be addressed with the conversion and the Linux compatibility layer. So it's, it's a pretty nice project that Michael's got going on over there. You can also support the project and donate to it. You can sign up for a premium account if you want to, not sponsored or anything, but it's a useful project, really good stuff, and he keeps it pretty up to date. He's been doing it since 2004. Wow. Pharonix Premium will give you ad-free browsing, single page viewing. You get access to the forums and a bunch of other stuff. All right, you Linux lovers. Hopefully that was informative or entertaining, but mostly informative and a little bit entertaining. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you all next time.